far so. Well, there's, there's Garth Snow. 13th leading scorer in the league, and he's making he's got to be making no money. Oh let's, yeah. Let's face it. I mean, rookie, you know, rookies in, in the league, they don't make money. No, they don't. That's every league. Anyway, we're going to take a break. You're listening to from the press box right here on ninety point three WHPC, streaming on the iHeartRadio app. I'm Rob Leonard. Joining me is award winning sports writer Tim Leonard. Tim, you're on Twitter at at real Tim Leonard. This program is brought to you by Nassau Community College, which is a testing site for both the college-level exam program, CLEP, and DSST exams. Summer's a great time to earn some extra credits, study at the beach, and then take your 90-minute exam at Nassau. Colleges and universities through the country use these exams to award credits through associates and bachelor's degrees. The New York State Department of Education accepts CLEP exams for teacher certification, and the New York City teachers take CLEP exams to increase their knowledge and their income. Anyone can take a college-level exam, but make sure sure your school or employer will accept the exam and what score is required for awarding credit. Last year, over 10,000 New Yorkers earned college credits with CLEP. Spanish is the most popular exam in New York. Always check with an academic advisor before registering for any exams. For more information, call 516-572-9947 or visit ncc.edu slash CLEP. Music. For all those songs radio has forgotten about, join me, Big Ed, Mondays from 10 a.m. till noon for the Good Gold Show. We'll bring back all the great hits of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and more. The sounds of doo-wop to disco, all the Motown soul and great rock and roll. We'll even take your requests and dedications to the Good Gold Show. Music. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC and streaming on the iHeartRadio app. Shake off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 6 on Revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities, an occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 6 on Revelations. Right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. WHPC. Welcome back to From the Press Box. 516-572-7440. That's the number to call if you have a comment or question about what we're talking about. A lot about the Islanders today so far, which was always a good thing. Um, Great weekend. Great weekend for the Islanders. Great weekend. One of of the best weekends for this franchise probably in a couple of decades. Well, news wise, you know, you know, if they're Lots. winning, if they're winning, it's always better. But new, when new they're playing, coach, new coach, great coach, guys just won the Stanley Cup. That's you, you can't do much better than that. Great draft, yep. by by all accounts. Every 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 review that I read of, and and I'm talking about NHL dot com, and and they they they're quoting several GMs and hockey people who and and. The, the reviews of the draft right, that you right, saw right. on the NHL website, all that. Everybody said the Islanders did a great job this and weekend. And Barzell being named calendar winner and and great Here draft. And they just, you know, you know they just have to sign John Tavares uh, and, and get a goal this week and, and get a goalie. And we, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready. I, um, I would be on that bagels for life thing, I'll tell you what. Well, that, <laughs> also the guy, uh, Bagel Boss, or one the, which is a chain or whatever it is, has uh, offered uh, – uh, Tavares uh, daily bagels, is daily it? bagels, daily bagels, which, daily fresh bagels y- for life. You know what happens? He does he it either for, either his life or Tavares's life. He does. For what, life. what happens is Tavares gets signed, and he goes, "Why don't you donate those to a charity or something?" That's no. what's going to happen. Yes, it is. You can't eat. Uh, you can't eat a dozen bagels a day. You know, who said a dozen? He delivers a couple of bagels a day. You can't deliver two bagels a day. Sure, you can. No, you can't. You do it over a week or something. Anyway, uh, quickly, um, the Mets. We're just going to say it, they're horrible. Um, one thing you have to stay away from, Met fans, is anything online, Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> because they're, they're getting ready to jump off the building one at a time, or maybe five at a time. I don't know. Uh, I, we know the Mets right now are just a bad team. The Mets are in sell mode. They're going into sell mode right now and, as we speak. But you know what? Um, 
I'm just sort of sick of seeing it on on Facebook. You know, Facebook book will just follow. If you click on the Mets, it'll start feeding you more Mets stuff. Right. So you think that's that good. everyone hates the Mets or something. Not they everyone. Do. <laughs> well, there's a lot of anger right now towards the Mets, towards the Will Ponds, towards the fact that this team just doesn't seem like they care. Um, they're, they're, the there's, bad, there's a lot of things wrong with this team. The bad thing about Mickey Calloway, the manager, and and I like Mickey. I think I think Mickey is 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 a good guy in a bad situation, but his team plays with like like a like they like they don't care like you just said, but fundamentally, they're a bad team, and that's something that a manager needs to address. That's something that that first of all should have been addressed in spring training, but they they need. Well, the, they need a smack in the head is what they well, need. The problem with the Mets right, you know, the problem with the Mets right now is they start out eleven and one, and the, the the hopes were so high in the beginning of the season. And I know you said not to get that way, but you know, tough. Um, <laughs> uh, eleven and one is a great to start. Your brother. But listen, eleven and one is a great start. So to of me, course it's a great start. But it it was it was it was. But if they but if they'd gone six and six, let's say, you wouldn't be, I think, so angry as a Met fan that this team is just. Lost in space. I mean, this is, this is a bad team right now, and I'm not sure how it all started. And I feel bad for Jacob Degrom. I hope they don't trade him. I know you think they should to the Yankees, of course. Uh, but I really don't think they should trade him. But at the same time, you don't want to turn into a, a good pitcher on a bad team. You know, you get turned into which Jerry, is, which is what he is right now. Which is Jerry Kuzman. You know, think about it's Jerry. Not a lot of old Mets pitchers. You know, Jerry Kuzman, 75 and 76 was was a good pitcher. He just had a bad record. And then I think he was traded to the, what the Twins, I think. Twins, it was. yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, Th- this this is Kuzman how, should have had three hundred wins. Well, yeah, but this is how this is why the next few months are going to be important for the Mets and to try to figure out what they're what how they're going to move forward. Because do you trade Jacob Degrom and get a haul of prospects back from a team like the Yankees, who have lots of really good pitching prospects? Lots of arms who, who who are regularly touching the high 90s. So right. do you get two or three of those guys and Clint Frazier, let's say, and say, all right, this is this is how we're going to rebuild. And and these these are our guys going to be our guys going going into the future. We're going to get th- at least three quality prospects from the Yankees and move forward with these guys. Right now the Mets farm system has next to nothing. All right. They have a couple of pitchers. This Peter Alonso is a first baseman. I don't. I don't know what his what his story is. I, I thought Dom Smith was the first baseman of the future. Now I hear Peter Alonso is the first baseman of the future. If when if if so, what do you do with Dom Smith? I don't know. You know what, what gets me? I'm, um, was it last night's game or Saturday's game? There was a, there was a perfect bunting situation. Dom Smith. Dom Smith and uh, I believe that was Saturday. Yeah, and and. <laughs> And Mickey Calloway said, "Well, you know, uh, he's not really a good bunter." He's no. He's he said he's never bunted in his career. Well, he bunted once in the minor leagues. You know what you do today? You 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 call the ghost of uh, Phil Rizzuto up, and you say, "Okay, you're gonna you're gonna practice bunting." Look, when they go into the cage, every guy when he goes into the cage, the first pitch that they see, they bunt. Now that's not to say that they can do it in the game because half of these guys in the cage can't even do it. Right. And and that's that's when somebody when somebody's throwing them a cookie. All right. <laughs> but especially with with shifts nowadays, why aren't why aren't players working on bunting? If if you need a single if 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 I'm down a run, if my team is losing four to three and it's the ninth inning and Dominic Smith is coming up to lead off the inning. I want Dominic Smith to be able to lay one down because if they're going to play the shift on him and they're going to play the, the, the shortstop on the second base side of the bag and the third baseman is going to be playing closer to second base than he is to third base, I want Dom Smith dragging a bunt I, down third base I, I do. or at least pushing a bunt down third base so that he has a chance to get on base. And if they're going to give me a free base runner like that and I'm down by a run and my leadoff guy, if, they, if they're practically giving him first base, but he, he doesn't have the skill – to be right, able right. To, to take advantage of the freebie it's, they're giving him? It's time. That's idiotic. It's time to wake up. Um, I don't want to talk too much about the Mets. Uh, quickly about the I Yankees. Uh, for the first time, they lost three in a row this, this season, season yes. to, uh, of all teams, the Tampa Bay Rays. Just unbelievable. Um, I, I, am, I am so mad about yesterday's game. 
and, and a lot of Yankee fans are mad about yesterday's game because that that ridiculous piece of crap stadium down in Tampa not only cost the Yankees a win, but it also also cost them Gary Sanchez. Yeah. And and here's why. All right. Clint Frazier hit what would have been a home run. There is no no debate on this. He hit a bomb. And what happens? It hits a speaker that's hanging from the ceiling at this ridiculous, how low is the speaker? It, low that, grade stadium that it, it that it, a ball can hit. It's it. not that low. He hit a high bomb. The, the stat, stat the stat cast thing, which is an accurate measure, I think we all agree, estimated that that the ball would have traveled three hundred forty five feet. Down the line at Tampa is three fifteen. You think that's a home run? Yeah, home run. Hit the speaker. So not only does the ball not go out. But because of the ground rules in Tampa Bay, the ball is in play. So the ball hits the speaker. The shortstop goes out into short left field, catches the ball. So now we don't. not only don't the Yankees get a home run, it's an out <laughs> on a ball that is a home run. Yeah. So because of that, Giancarlo Stanton later on hits, hits it to home run, ties the game, and sends it into extra innings. All right? Now keep in mind, if Clint Frazier's ball wouldn't have hit the speaker, it's a home run, and the Yankees go home winners. Instead, Gary Sanchez, I believe it was in the 10th inning, is, is hits a ground with a short, is trying to beat out a double play. As soon as he hits first base, grabs his groin, he's got to pull a groin. So now Gary Sanchez is going to be out for a month because of this ridiculous Tropicana field. Because the, the game never should have gotten to extra innings, and I, I'm infuriated. I want to know why they have a speaker over the, uh, the field. Well, that's what Aaron Boone asked after the game. You know, he, he's like, he's like, well, you know what? It's the ground rules. You roll with it. And then he took a pause and he said, you know, but why is there a speaker in fair territory? Yeah. Makes sense. I, I, I totally move agree. the speaker. I totally agree, man, because it makes absolutely no sense. It was it, it's it's just it's stupid that that stadium is is garbage. I actually covered an arena football game there and it was garbage back then. That was 20 something years ago. They had a arena game in a, st- in, in, in a real yeah, stadium. That's where they played. That's that's where uh, the Tampa Bay Storm played, but uh, it's it's just it's absurd. And and Chase and Shreve is another guy who had a good start to the season, but in the last month or so has been a nightmare. The Yankees, I saw a stat. The Yankees, the Yankees threw something like 177 pitches. I think I think their bullpen yesterday threw 177 pitches and allowed no hits. All right, this was after Domingo Herman had had a had a uh, had a. a, a uh, let's, let's say a mediocre start. I'll give him. I'll give him a half a half a bit of credit. Okay. 177 pitches, no hits for the bullpen. Chase and Shreve, one pitch, home run, game over. <laughs> I, 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 you know me. I don't call for players' jobs. No, I don't know. Don't. I don't know why Chase and Shreve is still on the Yankees roster. He, he, he has shown himself to be unreliable. Okay. So, uh, the, the only the only positive things I can say about him. Is, is that he's not Jerry Blevins or Jason Vargas? That's about it, and that's not that's that's a low bar I'm setting here. But the, the Yankees need to do something. They, they, they find another lefty, or or just bring up somebody else. He's he's not getting the job done. Well, we'll see what happens with that. We're gonna take a break right now. You're listening to from the press box right here on ninety point three WHPC. And if you have a comment or question, give us a call, 516-572-7440. Okay. Yo. Tell your friends about the NASA Morning Madhouse. Hear what you're missing. Check it out. Check it out. Do you so. think that if Post Malone was a piece of crispy bread, his name would be Toast Malone? <laughs> Just, I you know, never thought about that. What if he's like super into Halloween? He'd be Ghost Malone. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's like more than one of him? But like, <laughs> he's the best out of all Go of them. To- so he's the most Malone. <laughs> <laughs> What if he never, like, stops talking about his own music and he's just, like, super, like, into himself? He'd be Boast Malone. Like, <laughs> wow. What if he walks the beach? He'd be Coast Malone. Like, <laughs> and if he throws a party, he's Host Malone. <laughs> National Morning Madhouse. Weekday mornings from 7 to 9. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. A Super Bowl champion. 
U.S. congressman, publisher of Long Island Business News, award-winning authors, physical fitness, life coach, and celebrities like Billy Crystal and Eddie Murphy? I had no idea so many awesome people got their start at Nassau Community College. Well, they're always saying that NCC is where success stories begin. With people like that as graduates, it must be true. 